What's an ohm? Okay, this question comes from Martin in Florida, and he writes, what is an ohm? When I was in Puerto Rico, I went to this very well-known music store to buy a pair of speakers. I met the owner of the store and asked him about uh, what was an ohm. He placed his right hand close to his lips and told me, this is one ohm. Ohm. Then he moved his hand away from his lips and told me, this is eight ohms. Ah, I got it. This is an ohm and this is eight ohms. Mm. Anyway, that didn't answer my question. <laughs> I'll say it probably didn't. Uh, but finally, I bought a pair of bronze monitor audio speakers. Well, good. Um, I had to look in the dictionary too, but I really don't understand the meaning. Can you tell me in your own words, what do you understand for an ohm? An ohm is a measurement of resistance. Luke, the resistance. So, um, officially, if I remember right from school, an ohm is basically a uh, something, a, 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 a conductor of some kind. Where's, here, I'm sitting on my our bench here, and then I don't see any resistors hanging out. Probably should have, but if you have two points that you're that you're running current from, let, let's let's say if it's a light bulb or anything, and you're going to have a battery, and you put that battery across those two points, officially one ohm is what happens when you put one volt across this these two points, and it draws one amp of current, and that's officially one ohm. But that's engineer speak. It probably means as little to you as putting my hand over my mouth and saying, this is an ohm and that's eight ohms. It's, it's a, let's think of a better way to explain that. If we have two cables, you know, we've got a cable here and we, and, and and we're going to connect that to one side of a battery and then to the other side of a battery, but we hold them in air and there is nothing but air between it. Essentially, we have what we would call an open circuit. No current is flowing. So there the ohms would be astronomically high, very, very high. And I suppose someone can measure it because really if you hold them fairly close together, I suppose, depending on the, the, the level of voltage, there's something going, and the air could act as a resistor. But for all practical purposes, the resistor is out there, you know, infinite resistance, if you will. And then if we tie those two together, short circuit them, then we, would, we could say that is essentially zero ohms, because a short circuit um, whatever voltage you put across there, it's just going to draw tons of current without this, this magic ratio we were talking about, one volt, one amp, okay? So not connected, very, very high ohms, almost unmeasurably high ohms, totally connected, zero ohms. Now anything in between that, that is converting this electrical energy into heat or motive action, like moving a speaker, or whatever that energy is being applied to, use in a resistor, it would, just be, it would just be generating heat. Anything above zero is, you know, like eight ohms, right? So an eight ohm load is going to basically take a voltage and convert it to heat. And the higher, so if I have an eight ohm resistor and I put 10 volts across it, you could use Ohm's law, which just look it up, to figure out how, how much current is going through that. That's, that the, that's what the guy Ohm came up with, was this, this law that we use uh, to calculate the, the voltage or the current or the impedance um, or resistance, if you will. But essentially, it's just it's, it's how much does it resist the voltage and how much of it is converted into heat or electromotive force. So an 8 ohm woofer 
draws less for a given voltage. So if I, if I have an amplifier and it's putting out, it's putting out this much voltage, and I put that into an eight ohm speaker, I'm gonna get X amount of, of current to push the speaker and make it do something. If I then swap that speaker out for a four ohm load, and the same voltage goes across it, I'm going to take twice as much current to have the same thing happen. That's, I know, don't get all wigged out because it's not exactly correct, but th this is good enough for you to under try and understand. An eight ohm speaker with a specific voltage across it will take half as much as a four ohm speaker and half again as much as a two ohm speaker and, 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 and on. So the lower the ohms, for a given amount of voltage, just picture of battery, the more current is taken, the more, how, the more the battery gets drained. And the higher that number, 16 ohms, 32 ohms, 100 ohms, doesn't drain the battery very much. It's got a lot of resistance to the current flowing from the plus to the minus of the battery or the power supply or whatever. I know it can seem complicated, um, and I hope that helps, because I know there's a lot of confusion about that. Uh, and maybe that gave you a little bit of insight? Okay, great question. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow.